All right, everybody, welcome to ABC's Breeding 101. Um, what we're going to do in this video is explain a little bit about the uh, breeding procedures in uh, the ABC horse. And with me is Centire. And um, once we get through the presentation, we'll have a couple of questions. And we'll ask, answer your questions for you, and um, that'll be it. So, Centaur, if you would uh, take the honors. Sure, thanks, Dar. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody, and I uh, appreciate you taking the time out. I, I know that you've spent a lot of time uh, breeding over the last several months. Some of you have just started, but uh, what we wanted to do is make sure that we kind of explain how we're doing things. We're not going to give you all the secrets and how everything is being done, but for those of you that may not know how some of the traits are appearing and how the different breeds are showing up and you're surprised that you've been throwing thoroughbreds for a while and all of a sudden you see a new breed pop out of your horses, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of time tonight and kind of step you through some examples of, of how some of that may occur, give you a little bit of feel for how the breeding works. Tonight we're only going to demonstrate that through the breeds, but understand that eyes, manes, tails, face markings all work the same way as what I'm going to show you with the breeds and that is that they get the material, the genetic material from the parents. And so if you take a look on the stage, what we've set up here is some examples of on the, at the back part there we see raised up on the higher part of the platform. So let's go ahead and take a look at the platform in the back. And if we go from left to right as we're facing the platform, what you see is in the pink uh, arrow that's over the horse on the left, is let's, that's the mother. All right. And the way the horses are set up for ABC, we have, we have what's called the visible gene, or the thing that you see that's the actual horse that you see it. So in this case, it's a Mustang. And then we have up to three recessive genes. You will always have at least one recessive gene or up to three. So in this case, I've shown an example where I have a mother that's a Mustang, and she has three recessive genes. She has a paint, a Clydesdale and a drum horse in her recessive genes, and she's a Mustang. Now, if you look over at the father, right, he is a Mustang, and he has three recessive genes as well. He has a paint, a Clydesdale, and an Arabian. So that's the genetic material or the genes that those horses carry. The way the rules are set up for ABC is when I mate these horses, the children of these horses can only come from those genetic materials that those horses have. It's not randomly dra drawn out of some large set of genes for breeds. It, it's not made up. These come from these horses, and they will only come from these horses and this material. If you saw something else that those parents didn't have, then that would be incorrect, and these horses do not do that. So now let's take a look at this front row, and what I've done here is actually shown some example children that could come out. So if we start from left to right, look at child number one. Now in this case, child number one is a Mustang, and he has a recessive gene of paint, Clydesdale, and drum. So what you can see is he probably got the Mustang from the two parents, one of the two parents, and they both have Mustangs, so the odds of a child coming out that's Mustang is higher than other odds because there's two parents that have the same genes. But you also see that they carry Clydesdale in both of them, and in this case they pass Clydesdale on to the child as a recessive gene. And they both have paint. So the way I've set this up, these horses actually share a lot of genes in common. And so they're going to pass a lot of those on to their children. But you also notice the drum horse as the third recessive gene. That came from the mother because the father doesn't carry the drum. So if this were to happen for most of you, when you bred two Mustangs and you got a Mustang, you would go, great, perfect, that's what I expected. And, you know, that's the odds of things happening, and you're probably going to see that more often than not. Okay, let's go to the second child. So we made the parents again. They had another child. Again, we have a Mustang. But now what's happened is we see that while the Clydesdale again came in, because, again, both parents are carrying it, 
probably going to be passed on, not guaranteed, but it gets passed on. In this case, now the pain is there, but now we have the Arabian that has been passed as a recessive gene, and that came from the father. Okay? So that's nothing really exciting there. You would still see a Mustang, and for most of you, you would think, okay, I just had two Mustangs, because you can't see the hidden genes. And you would think, great, my two Mustangs are going to throw Mustangs over and over. Then you keep breeding, and all of a sudden you get a Clydesdale out of two Mustangs. That's this child three, which is right to the right of that Mustang. Now you might think, oh my goodness, this is a random event. This is ABC going wrong. I should not have gotten a Clydesdale out of two Mustangs. Ah, but that's not true. If you notice, those two horses actually have Clydesdale as the recessive genes. And so since they both have it, the odds of producing a Clydesdale is pretty good just like it is for a Mustang. So now you look at that, and this Clydesdale has a Mustang as a recessive because it took those from the parents. It got the paint, and then it got the drum horse from the mother. So it is passing on the genes. You're not going to see any other genes that aren't in the parents. But now we have a Clydesdale. All right? Now let's go to the right and go to child number four. In this case, another Clydesdale popped out. So now you're starting to think, now that's not good. I've got two Mustangs that keep throwing Clydesdales. That's not right. But again, what you don't know is inside those genes, you have those recessive genes, and both of them are carrying Clydesdales. So the chances of that happening aren't, but they're pretty good, right? And so now you have a Clydesdale. But in this case, the genes are mixed up a little bit. The paint is in this recessive gene, the first recessive gene, and the Mustang is in the second one. So they're kind of mixed up a little bit, and that's how the genetic material is passed on. It comes from the parents. The order they were drawn based on some rules and some logic that we have. They aren't changed. Things are set in place. And, and so everybody follows by the same rules. Now you're thinking, okay, so I've got two Mustangs that will throw probably a Mustang, or in this case, now I've seen some Clydesdales occur, so I'm thinking it's going to throw Mustangs or Clydesdales, so I'm starting to feel pretty good about that. I wake up in the morning, and guess what? Look at horse number five. ABC just did an update, and I've got an Arabian horse. They must have messed something up. Nope. What's happened is, if you look at the horses, which one has the genes for an Arabian? The father, see, it has a recessive trait. Now, only one parent's carrying that, so it was several horses down the line before you saw it. It could be even more before you would see that pop up. But because those horses carry it, and every time you breed them, there's a chance that that can be passed on to the child, you'll actually get that as an example as a horse. So now that horse, if you look at it, it's an Arabian, and it's carrying Mustang Clydesdale on the paint. So it's carrying the genes that the horses that got from its parents. Now, if I were to breed these horses again, the odds are I'm probably going to get a Mustang or a Clydesdale because both parents carry those. Or what I haven't shown you is both of them have paint as well. And so the odds of throwing the paint could happen. So again, I want to reiterate here that the, the way the horses are matching and the way we do this will only come from the material that they carry. They will not get genes from anywhere else. They will only come from the parents. The exception to this rule is if you have starters. Starters are like a genetic vending machine. They draw things out of the gene pool, and that's how you can get new traits. So when you mix a starter with another horse, and I don't have a demo set up for that tonight, but if I were to mix a starter with one of that, the male or the female, the mother or the father up there, then the mother or the father would pass their genetic material on that they have. The starter then draws from the gene pool and mixes in new genes to produce a child. From then on, those children now have the genetic material that they have, and that's all they will be able to pass on. That's why you don't see new eyes or manes or tails that are introduced come from older horses because they're not carrying those in their line. But if you buy a starter or you have a starter, then they have the chance of drawing that from the gene pool and introducing that into your herd. So that's kind of a simple thing tonight. We're going to um, 
put some more things together to show some other examples about how we might have a bloodline where you have grandparents and you can see how the genes pass down from a grandparent to a parent to a child and show some examples like that. And we may even put a starter out there to show how from different times when you use a starter, you don't always get the same things because starters pull from the gene pool each time they breed. So that was sort of a, a pretty fast demo, and it's kind of the first time I've gone through it with you, and so I'd really like to hear some of your questions and get some feedback on you and, and, and try to work with you on that.